Hey guys, Super Silverstone here. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be taking a look on episode 6, which is command arguments and some more mathematical formulas that you can use when creating your plugins. So specifically, we're going to be working on commands today, a little bit more, and this will be one of our final episodes on commands until we do things like tab completers and such. So, as we can see, we want to create a command. In this case, we are going to be making the slash coin flip command, which will automatically roll whatever one of two options, tails or heads. So we're going to be making that today, and we're going to go through some mathematical formulas and some cool things that we're going to be making. So stick around, and we're going to get started. So we are in our main plugin tutorial class right now. Uh, if you have been following along with this series, you'll know that you have one giant uh, plugin, which is going to have everything that we make in it. Uh, as we continue, so things will start to get a little bit more complex, but today we're not really getting too complex with it, we're just going to start going into some of the uh, algorithms that you can use to make plugins better. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Java, we're going to click Java class, and then we're going to create a new class, in this case I'm going to name it coinflip.java, just like that, and that will bring coinflip, public class coinflip, in our package right here. Now public class coinflip, all we're going to do with that is we're going to move my mic. We're going to go into implementing a command executor, because we want to create a command, so we're going to be implementing command executor. In this case, we're going to go show more options, and we're going to implement the methods, hit OK, and that's going to create this method for us, which is the on command method. So, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to start writing. So, we're going to do if sender instance of player so if the person who sent this command is a player, if you see it go red like this, you can always right-click Show Actions, or you can just click on it and go Control-Alt, uh, oh, hang on, of player, there we go. And then you can import that class. It's really important that you import the classes, because if not, it will not work. And then we're going to do some curly brackets on this, and we're going to say player player is equal to cast of player sender. This is called casting, so sender has specific properties, or the command sender has specific properties, but the player has more properties. So we're just going to turn this command sender variable into a player variable, just like that. And then we're going to do int random is equal to uh, get random int just like that. Now, this look is wrong, right? However, we're going to create a method right now, and we can see down here, private int get random int. Uh, we're going to be using this one right here. So down here, this is below almost everything. So here we have this command executor, which runs right here. Then up here, we have our on command, and now we have this other method called private int get random int. So we're going to get a random integer. In this case, we want to get an integer, well actually we're going to do private, we're not going to do int, we're going to do integer in this case, um, integer, get random int, and then we want to take in an integer called max, right? Now you can see this has gone red up here because we need an argument that will go in here, but we'll come back to that in a second. So now we're going to do random ran. Uh, just for convenience, import the class random. Random ran is equal to new random, which is a part of the Java utilities command. So you can see that up here we have org.bucket, but down here we have Java util. So this is a part of Java already. This is already a Java class, or a Java method. So we can run that, and then we're going to return ran.nextInt bound by max. So, if this doesn't make much sense, that's okay. Uh, we're going to get to it, and it's going to make a bunch of sense. So that's all we have to do down there. And get random int, we need to set a max. So the max that you can get is 2. That's what we're going to set it as. And then we're going to run... Uh, actually, we don't need to print out random. Uh, we can just do string... No, we're not going to do that. I'm just thinking about it. Sorry, I'm having troubles with my keyboard. Okay, so if random is equal to zero, then we will do something, else it, sorry, my keyboard is so annoying, 
else if random is equal to 1, then we'll do something else. So I want to show you something else real quick before we finish this off, because we are almost finished. Uh, but I want to show you something. So save your thing, and right here we have get random in max of 2. What does that mean? Well, we have one, 0 and 1, what if it rolls 2? Well, we're going to look at this real quick. If we go down here to random.nextInt, we can do a little bit of reading, and we can see that it bound the upper bound exclusive. So it returns the next pseudo-random, uniformly distributed int value between 0, which is inclusive, and the bound, which is exclusive. So we're going to take a look real quick at what that means. Okay, so we're back in Minecraft, and this is where we're going to walk through uh, arguments and the actual values that they can have. So here we have 0, 1, 2, and 3. Everything starts with 0, okay? This is the, if it's inclusive or inclusive, what value would it get? It would pick 0, 1, 2, or 3, if it's inclusive or inclusive. What you need to understand here, though, is that the 0 is the start, not 1. So if you put the value of 3, the values that you can get are 0, 1, 2, 3 in this case, because the bound is the number you choose for uh, what you're actually, the limit, you can call it, the max. So in this case, the max is 3, the bound is 3. If it's inclusive and inclusive, then that means the possible values are 0, 1, 2, and 3, okay? In this case, we have the value 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. The bound value is 4. The max value is 4. So if, in this case, it's exclusive and exclusive, the only values you can receive, in this case, if you use the bound of 4, are 1, 2, and 3, because this one is exclusive and this one is exclusive, meaning they don't count. However, you still have to put in the bound of 4. This isn't seen very often, but it is a possible. So you wouldn't put in the bound of 3 if you want 3 values, you'd put in 4 to get 3 different values. Now in this case, we have 0, 1, 2, and 3, bound by 3. The possible values we can get, we have stone is 0 is exclusive, 3 is inclusive, the only values you can get are 1, 2, or 3. You can't get the exclusive value, right? And this is bound 3. And now in this case, we have 0 is inclusive. This is also the next int um, Java random uh, section or method. So we have 0 is inclusive, 3 is the bound. What are the amount of values you can get? 2, 1, and 0. So you can get 3. The bound 3 is exclusive, so you're not going to get that value. Hopefully that makes sense. This is the one that we're running on, except it's just like this. This is the value we're running at, 0, 1, and 2. We use 2 to bound, so then we can only get 2 values back. Because uh, to the value 2 is exclusive, but the value 0 is inclusive. So we can only get 2 possible values if we use the bound of 2. All right, let's pop back over to the editor, and we'll continue. Okay, so... Now that we are continuing onward, we can continue to make this work. So what we're going to start off by doing is we're going to create a string up here, and we're going to call it output. So this is the value that we're going to get, and we're going to set it to null. In this case, you don't actually have to set it to anything. You can just create it like this, string output, but I would set it equal to null in case something happens. So now you can check if it's null, then you know an error occurred. In this case, if it's 1, then we're going to set the output equal to the string heads. If the output is equal to tails, then it's 1. Or if it's 1, then it's tails, right? Uh, yeah, but add that on there. There we go. And now, in this case, we're going to come down here. Not that far down keyboard. Oh my lord. This is ridiculous. So here... We're going to do player. We're going to send a message. So we do player.send message. And then we're going to create a string. So in this case, I'm going to use chat color. I can use chat color dot uh, red. Or actually, I'm going to do blue. Or, eh, aqua. We'll go with aqua. Plus, and then we're going to run some text. And we're going to say, you rolled, uh, you 
rolled a... You rolled... Dot, dot, dot. And then we're going to go out front, add in a plus sign, and then we're going to put output on the end. So now it's going to say you rolled either heads or tails. Just like that. Now that is actually done. The only thing you have to do is remember to click this return value and make sure that return is set to true. Otherwise, you're going to have a few problems. And that is all you have to do for it. However, you do have to make sure you go into your plugin dot plugin tutorial or your main class and you need to register it. So we're going to do get command and in this case we're going to run the command called coin flip. If my keyboard works, coin flip dot and then on the outside dot set executor new uh, coin flip. There we go. And one more thing, go into your plugin.yml and you need to make sure, not to be here, we're not doing that yet, that you have your plugin.yml set up correctly. In this case, you would go down and you would use coin flip right here. So I'm going to just make one again for you so you can see how I do it. This is annoying. In this case, we would go coin flip, just like that. And then we'd go down, do description. You could do usage on the same line, or you can even use aliases. So aliases are just commands that will run the same exact thing. In this case, I have slash flip as a command. So let's go take a look at that and see it all work. So we're going to go to file, save all, build. In this case, we're going to do uh, rebuild so we can rebuild the jar. Plugin.yml, coin flip. We've set up everything correctly. Now we can go back into Minecraft. All right, so here we are back in game, and we're going to do slash reload. All right, now reload complete. We can do slash uh, coin flip. Run it. You rolled tails, heads, 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 tails, 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 tails. Tails, tails, tail. Wow, that is a lot of tails. Heads, tails, heads. You see what I mean? So that works. And then also, if you used alias, you could do slash flip, and it will do the same exact thing. Right? So that is this episode complete. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell to turn on those notifications. Go down to the comments, leave a comment. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to check out these videos. Uh, you can check out the GitHub in the link down below if you want to check out all the code. Uh, that is the first link in the description. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, everyone.